What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's the start of the FA Cup final previews and we've got a perfect guest to start this off with. It's the guy that we keep going back and forth with on Twitter. He never stop. It's Babs. Bro, first off, introduce yourself. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm good, bro. Um, yeah, Babs for Ian on YouTube, Twitter. Um, as you might know, you know, uh, but look, listen, I know a lot of Chelsea fans will know me because of Twitter and my trolling or my obsession or whatever. Nah. But um, yeah, I'm here. We're live. You know, FA Cup final is what it is, bro. You excited? How are you feeling? Excited is, yeah, nervous is the word. Very nervous because I understand win it, it's the best feeling. We can give it the big one. We can go for it. Lose it. Mute the notifications, put your phone away, fly to the moon. Yeah, it's high. That's what it is. So I am very nervous for the game. I think that's what it's like for both sides. Chelsea especially, because us especially with last year with Baku. You lot will have that on your heads. If you lot beat us, trust me, everything's getting muted and you're not hearing from me for that weekend because I know you lot are going to be hunting me down on Twitter that night. Uh, you, bro. That's the thing. You lot need payback, and I think that's what's going to be the mental edge in the game. It all depends on what club turns up with a better mental state on the day. Yeah, exactly. But look, you say that who wants him all? Go back to Baku last year. We needed it. It's the it was the final, the finale. We didn't make Champions League for the year, and it was like this is a time to to make up for it. You know, you got the final Europa League. Emery's the specialist, apparently. But look what happened. You know. And so when you say he wants him more, I hear that. But also, you just never know who's going to turn up. You know, go back to the last final. You guys were ch- winners of the league. You know, you just won the league. Arsenal, fifth in the league, had an awful year. Sanchez might be leaving. Urs might be leaving. We go and turn up. Danny Welbeck, of all people, turns up. Yeah. Rob Holding turns up. Per Mertesaka turns up. So honestly, you you, I can't believe it. Yeah, I hear that, but you know, it is what it is. But I just think you just never know. I can't, I can't predict what Arsenal's going to come out, and I can't predict what Chelsea's going to come out. Like that's so exactly it's... what it is. Exactly. Because here's the thing: we've been so inconsistent this season. I remember we beat Spurs two nil away, lost two nil at home to Southampton three days after, beat you guys at the Emirates, and then we dropped two points to Brighton on New Year's Day. We're very inconsistent. We beat City and lost to West Ham. Yeah. And that's the thing, though. Like, I don't know, I don't know what the result's gonna be. I'm trying to predict. All right, maybe this guy's gonna turn up and that guy's gonna turn up. But it's like, I just don't understand. I don't, I can't figure it out because both Lampard and Arteta are both up and coming top managers. I have, I have mm. to respect both on that behalf, you know. And I also understand Chelsea's a young side. Um, players like Abraham and Mount, they're gonna want to win trophies. You know, it's a, a Chelsea thing, yeah. You know, and they're gonna want to win their first trophy as a Chelsea player. So. They're going to be up for it, you know. Make no mistake, the Chelsea players through and through. They've come through the academy. They've won stuff with the academy, so it's time for them to win. Whereas for Arsenal, players like Aubameyang, it's time to almost make your legacy now, isn't it? Like you've you've come to the uh, Arsenal, you've won a Golden Boot, but what trophies do you have to show for it? Nothing. Let's talk moment, about yeah. another Chelsea player that could turn up, Olivier Giroud, the player that you like, that you lot know very, very well. I don't understand this guy, honestly. <laughs> I can't I can't make this guy up. So at Arsenal, the this Prince guy, of Wembley. Listen, the thing is at Arsenal, he was um yes, underappreciated, un- understandable. He wasn't that bad. Um I think the Urzel season where we came that close to the league and we let it go right towards the end, and Leicester just did their bit, fair enough. But I have to say, in that season, if we did have an Abamiang instead of Giroud, no disrespect to Giroud, we do win a league title. We do. It's a fact, you know. We had Ozil was on fire. The defence was good. I think we had the most clean sheets or something like that. We just needed that goal scorer in certain big games to turn up. Or even the little games. And Drew just wasn't that guy. Um, but I do think at the same time, fans go fans go a bit over the top on him because it's Drew and he's an easy scapegoat. And he became the awful scapegoat at the same time as well. Mm-hmm. But for Chelsea, uh, this guy, every time I see him play, he's scoring goals, he's getting assists, he's winning trophies. Last year, Baku, he turned up, you know, made Aubameyang look awful. So, Europa League on nine last guy. season. Yeah, he but got robbed like, the player of the season. I know it was Eden Hazard that won it, but he played like three games. It should have been Giroud. Well, I was in the Europa League player of the year. Yeah, they gave oh, okay. it to Hazard. I mean, fair play, Eden Hazard. I'm not going to say too much, but Olivier Giroud should have got that award. 
Yeah. So, what do you think? Like, do you think Drew is going to call the Arsenal issues in this game? Do you think he's the like he's the guy for Chelsea? Definitely. You lot ain't going to survive the physical battle with Giroud and he's going to get the best out of Mount and Pulisic shall be around him. And that's the thing about him. Best centre forward in the world. What he does best, he does better than anyone else. And he has his deficiencies. He's not a perfect player, but if you play to his, spre- to his strengths, I always say you get the best out of him and you get the best play- guests out of the players that are around him. Eden Hazard said it himself. Best centre forward in the world. Yeah, look. I respect him. You know, he was good at Arsenal. I can't say he was that bad. And for, I think he bought him for £12 million. So for that, he was perfectly good. Mm. Um, but I think there was just too much pressure on him at Arsenal. You know, he was meant to be the main guy, but he can't be that guy. At Chelsea, you have Pulisic, you have Mount and players like that. So at the same time, you've got that there. Whereas at Arsenal, it was like, he had to score all the goals, you know. But we had Sanchez and Ozil as well. So, yeah, man, I respect Giroud, but at the same time, I, I hate this guy. Like, you don't believe it, bro. Like, I just, it's like, I love him at the same time for he was good at Arsenal. Um, but at the same time, I hate him as well. I can't, I can't put my, I don't know what I say about Olivier Giroud. But for Arsenal, who do you, who do you think for Arsenal is like the guy to watch out for? Who are you scared of? Uh, definitely a bummy. Like, I ain't even going to sugarcoat with him. He's a, fin- yeah, he's he- a clinical finisher, straight up. And he's yeah, actually but... turned up in a big game for once as well, so I will say that. Oh, because he scored against Man City twice. Yes, I mean, he's needed a big game performance. This one will be the big turning point. If he has this, it'll mm-hmm. be like a, it'll be like your Mertesacker performance that we... I can't believe we gave him... So you've just compared a Bambiang to Mertesacker? No. No, he needs like an iconic performance on the, on the edge of that. Obviously, it'll be yeah, different but if Mertesacker was... played like one game. Bro, you have to respect that Mertesacker performance for a second. He That's, came back. That was bro, your team was better than us on that day. Like straight up, I'm not even gonna try sugarcoat it. We played. We were hungover. We were still celebrating that league title. Yeah, you might have been, but at the same time, you versed the hungover Liverpool the other day, and what was the score? So is that an bro, excuse? We were this close to coming back against Liverpool if it weren't for yeah. team next arms ruining it. All right, so all right, let's, let's talk about Kepa here. Let's talk about Kepa, okay, bro. Cool. Because let's, I thought we were, this was going to come around sooner or later. Let's now. discuss, bro. Because you know, remember last year we were going back and forwards, mm. that famous photo of Kepa with the Europa League trophy. Oh, he's better than Leno. Is he even better than Martinez? Is he? Bro, is he? Kepa from last season was. I don't know what the hell has happened to this guy this season. I've tried to defend him so much. But that Liverpool game was a turning point for me because he's got no confidence in himself. And if he ain't got any confidence in himself, I don't know how you expect anyone else to have any confidence in him either. And I think he knows it's the end for him. Lampard ain't really been that confident on him anyway. We're looking like we're interested in either Onana or Jan Oblak. Onana's a decent goalkeeper. Oblak, it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but if you really deep it, couple factors in there could make it a very possible transfer plus there is a release clause and i do think kepa could take what 20 million off that if we're lucky we could get half of that off but that's yeah. marina working another magic if she does that Fam, so this kepa i don't guy, know what we've done if you get 20 minutes for this kepa guy like i have to say that marina is like fair play to her night hub straight away because bruv they, 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 this guy is he's just so bad now he's it's not like he's just yeah, okay this guy's bad He's really, really bad, like a- a- atrocious sometimes. And like, there's certain things where I'm like, say if any goal that goes against Chelsea, I'm like, is it the goalkeeper's fault straight away? Because I know he's always got something to do with it. Maybe, maybe his, his handling's poor, his saves, and like simple things that goalkeeper should be doing. This guy can't do, you know. Um, it's so the, it's the thing because last season Kepa was sick. I don't care. He got the he... five clean sheets in the Premier League that season. He was sick. This season has yeah. been a complete regression. And that's the mm-hmm. painful thing. My Kepa agenda has been hurt badly this season. I don't think it's gonna yeah, recover right. either. You were the you were the big defender of Kepa, bro. You were like, Yeah, this Kepa guy, you know. You can't even compare him to Martinez at the moment. Like, be honest for a second. Like that, Martinez has been good. If you saw Bias Premier League show and you guys are gonna see on the combined eleven on my channel tomorrow, we don't even go through the goalkeeper. Because I'll be real, I can't really talk <laughs> about that now. Even Caballero, he had that little spelling goal over Kepa in February and we weren't any better and we weren't any worse. So mm-hmm. I don't really know what to make of Caballero being in goal. He might be a bit more confident because Kepa's literally like bottom barrel right now. But it yeah. all depends on what goalkeeper turns up because I'm really, I'm not that sure. Right now, everyone's just shooting from range at us. 
If you take the the compilation of goals scored against us this season must be wild. It must be so wild. I saw Zaha's goal against Chelsea. I was like, yeah, it was a good goal, but it was down the middle basically, and he just let it go. So now nah, listen, let's let's not talk about Kepa too much because we know he's bad. Even you admit that, and when you admit a player is bad, we know he's bad, right? But listen, going forwards for Arsenal, we said Aubameyang's a threat. What do you think of Pepe? That's what I want to know. I'm still saying Pulisic over Pepe, but Pepe's a good player. I'm not offended by that. Uh, this season, I can understand that Pepe's had an all right season. Pulisic's had a very good season. I understand no, that. Obviously, I wanted Pepe, and apparently, I heard Pepe was vexed that we that we had the transfer ban last season. Oh, of course he was. Ah, Pepe's yeah, a good player. Was. Straight up, and he was a Chelsea fan too, so who never knows? Might be taking the Olivier Giroud way around. Oh, uh, shut up. What you thought was Giroud a Chelsea fan as well, then? Yeah, he might have been. I don't even nah. know. We're at that period bad. now where people are people are coming up saying that they were Chelsea fans, they want to come play for us. Yeah, uh, yeah, so nah, listen, in history nowadays, right? Yeah, man, you know, it's a, it's a sticky one there, but um, <laughs> it's a sticky one, but now nah, listen, I honestly like. As much as I don't like Chelsea as a club, because I don't, it's an Arsenal fan. Like, it's gonna happen like that, isn't it? Like I, it is but I have to res- I have to respect also. There is, there is a lot of young players coming through right now. You know, Abraham, mm. I think, is underrated. Um, Mount, underrated as well. You know, and I think football is just very reactionary nowadays. If a player has five bad games, he's the worst player. Has five great games, he's the best player. So, but yeah, players like Pulisic coming through, like the guy looked like a very class player. I remember, right? I think it was, it was you against Liverpool at the start of the season. What was it? Um, Super Cup, and I saw mm. Pulisic make that run. And I think it was offside or something like that. But when I saw that, and then I was like, "All right, this guy's a good player. Yeah, he's a good he's player." Got something about him. Isn't yeah, he? he had something about him. Where he just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and so listen, I think he'll be great next year for you. And I think going forward, you guys are not going to have issues. If you do have issues, Lampard has issues. Then right, if you can't get attacked from goals with Havertz, Werner, Ziyech, Mount, and all them lot there, right, then there's a problem with the manager. Mm. Defensively, though. You're suspect. You are. Massively suspect. I think right? it's the same for both teams. Yeah, but I think more for the Arsenal case, it's not the system itself. It's the players, the individuals, right? You can't trust them. So it's very similar for both teams right now. For Arsenal, what we need to saw is an attacking midfielder, creative midfielder. Ozil's finished. Let's face the facts. Um, as, much, as, as much as Ozil thinks wants to defend that, it's over, bro. Yeah, it's finished. Sorry, let go of the dream, oh, man. Mate. Uh, but yeah, defensively as well. Get a couple of good centre backs in, like we always know at Arsenal. And I think we have a good team, and you have a good team. And yeah, man, what, what do you reckon, right? Who's going to win that league first? Obviously, you're going to say Chelsea, but like, when do you think Chelsea can really compete for that league title? Again? Get a centre back and a left back, and we can compete for it next season. You think so? You think? I you think, think Lampard has? I think Liverpool, low key, even with the way they finished this season, I think next season. They can be got at. It's a wild statement to say, but I'm just throwing it out there. I don't think that team's going to be as good next season. Manchester City will be a massive threat, especially with the way this season ended. But depending on our signings, I don't see why not. I think next season will be more about contending for the title. I don't know if we'll last the full 38 games. Season afterwards, I definitely think we can go for it. Next, but next season, if we get the right transfers, I don't see why not. Yeah, look, I can I can see where you're going there. I mean, look, if my team was signing players at Havertz, I'd be gassed over the moon. So I understand why you lot have the excitement there. For also right now, it seems like we're broke FC again. Um, you know, can't afford party apparently. We've we go from the being the most broke club to being breaking record transfers to being the broke club again. Like I don't know what's happening there. Um, but you wasted yeah, listen, all your money on Pepe, and now you gotta get Willian on a free. Not happening. Honestly, not happening. I do not want that guy near my club. And I don't know why, but it's, it's it's when I see your own fans, right, turn on him like, like you do, like this guy. I don't want him near my club, bro. Yeah. Because I don't you think Williams is that bad. His are amazing. I don't think he's that bad, but just the way you guys talk about him is you make him sound like he is honestly the worst player. It's like a like a will be was for Arsenal. Right. I don't think he's that All bad. All I'm saying is I'm not being sold by another William Purple patch in 2020. I'm Apparently just, you're gonna keep him. I'm I'm hearing reports today that you're keeping him. We want to give him a two year contract, but he wants three years. Bro, I'm thinking, bro, it, we're already breaking our one year transfer scheme. I right, just, just take deep it, right? Just deep it. Chelsea want to keep him. Arsenal want him as well. Barcelona wanted him a year ago. What is it with this guy that everyone wants this guy, but no one wants him at the same time as well? I just don't understand. 
He can, like, track, he can track back and he can drag a couple of players back. in and open up space for other players around him. Bar that, he is very inconsistent. So I never want to see him take a corner again in my life. His, set, his free kicks are all right, but actually, no, his free kicks this season have been pretty good. I can't lie. He's been very unlucky with a couple of them this season. He's had a pretty good season, but I'll be real, the last two have been like bottom barrel. The only way was up. Last season, he got like four goals. But that's the thing, though. Like The more I see William, I only see him in big games and he turns up in most of them or has a good game. So I don't see him play week in, week out. So I don't know how he is. So I don't think he's that bad, but hey, man. Do you know well, what I'd love to see? Five. Last last year, right, Giroud broke my heart. Yeah, it hurt badly, right? Hazard scoring a goal. Yeah, it's Hazard. It's against Arsenal. I expect that. Giroud mm. hurt. Bro, that hurt mad. Like, when I saw him after the game and that, like, thank you, Arsenal, bro. I swear, yeah. to, I swear to God. All respect I have for this this guy, just, just out of the window. That Don't was gonna, literally gonna... the icing on the cake in the perfect bro. night. I was like, I respected him. I said, listen, you know, you got your Europa League, respect and all that stuff. After the game, man's going, thank you, Arsenal, bruv. Shut up. Don't want to hear that. Right? <laughs> I don't want to hear that. With this, I'm not going to go into him again. Listen, as I said, I don't know. I, I rate him. I don't rate him at the same time. You know, I have to say he's good at what he does. But, you know, he has let us down a few times as well. But, yeah, man, I think I would love nothing more. And I mean nothing more than to see David Luiz score a header. It's not going to happen. I know that. But just score a what header. I just... Because oh, okay, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a good point. On that. That's a good point. But I mean, obviously, Chelsea oh, in the Arsenal, not in the Arsenal, in the Chelsea goal. Yeah, I'd have nothing more than that. Just a bit of, oh, I want that so, but I need that. And just, I need that after last year. Yeah. Because last year still hurts. Yeah. And I just don't want to think about it anymore. But yeah, man, going into this game, I'm not confident. I'm nervous. But at the same time, I understand. Turn up Arsenal, we win this game. All right. Well, let's go for a score. Let's go for a score prediction before we wrap this up. All right, cool. I'm going to go for 2 1 Arsenal. Um, I don't think it'll be that much apart. No team's going to bat each other, I don't think. I think we're just as bad defensively. Um, but going forwards, Chelsea might have the edge or Arsenal might have the edge. But it's pretty close as well, if you get me. So it's just a matter of who wants him on the day, which players turn up. Um, you lot have secured Champions League football. We have nothing else. And I think if we don't win this game, we can't even make the Europa League. So listen, bro. Yeah, 2 1 Arsenal. All right, guys. Well, if you guys enjoyed this preview, don't forget to leave a like down this video and don't forget to subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well. Don't forget to check out this guy, Babs14. I got that right, right? You got that right, bro. All right, perfect. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below as well. So if you guys want to check out more from him, don't forget to check out Babs14 down in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.